Hello, everybody, and welcome to the neutrino weather of this week, July 5th till the 11th. So let's have a look. And um, yeah, like usual, I've mentioned it also to a friend this week. Um, doing the neutrino weather, you know, ain't that straightforward in a way. It's like, um, I had a friend who was sharing that she heard the neutrino weather from somebody else and that there's, you know, we're going to look at this and at that and the position of this and the other and blah and yeah and yeah. And I'm like, yeah, that's not really the way I personally partake in it. Um, in, in many ways, my way of looking at the neutrino weather is how does this in some way or another accompany me in my process and for sure one of the things that is clearly there and that i've talked about last week and that will continue to be there all the way till the 18th is this channel 4816 so the channel of talent now, I like a lot the name of the channel as such because it says the channel of the wavelength, the design of talent. And the wavelength mm -hmm. refers in some way or another to bringing our own unique frequency more and more and more into wavelength, you know, more into alignment with a life affirmative consciousness affirmative stance in life and when it comes to that i clearly see like yeah this is this is something that i'm tapping into like this is this is there and it's going on and then the other thing that really called out my attention this week because have a look let's let's just have a look together like let's run through the weather of this week and pay attention to the sacral center and to the root center so we go and we see like okay there's quite some activation taking place along the week in the root center and now i'm going to go back and pay specific attention to the sacral center and actually there's almost no activity going on in the sacral center except some you know, positions of the moon coming by there and staying there for 11 hours or something around that and then moving away. So that makes me reflect on, the, on, on my own situation, you know, on my own process these days. And what I'm seeing in my own process is that there is a lot of emphasis in my own internal awareness process on the root center and the root center for me is how i'm anchored in life and i'm noticing i'm talking to you and seeing like okay my voice is getting connected to that center you know it's like my voice sits there for the moment i can feel my legs i can feel myself anchored in that space and i and i recognize in my own process you know how challenging it has been in my own developmental process, in my early child conditioning and all that kind of stuff, to be really, really settled, anchored there. You know? I come from a family where neither my parents nor my brother or my sister, we have a defined root center. So all five of us, we have openness there. And so all five of us, if you look at the constitution of our bodies, even, we have very little anchoring or strength in the body part that has to do with the, you know, basically from the pelvic, from the pelvis downwards. You know? So in my own process i'm i'm seeing now like and especially these days especially these days that are you know that have gone by the 38 and the 
and the 39, that energy that has to do with my individual stance in life and how in terms of the, of the root center, I can take on that frequency and sit in it and stand in it and, and basically function from a grounded stance in life. And I'm looking at all the conditioning that sits there. Now this week, this is something that continues being there. So it is a week where it's interesting to pay attention to the fact of, hey, there is energy that asks for coming more and more into wavelength. And then there is no presence, almost no presence of sacral conditioning taking place. And at the same time, there is a lot of emphasis on the root center. The sun and earth throughout the whole week, first through the 39 and the 38, stand in root gates and join Jupiter, sorry, and join Pluto in the 60th gate. And Pluto in the 60th gate as we all know, on a larger socio-economical, political, you know, basically world level, Pluto is basically breaking down fundamental structures. And the breaking down of those fundamental structures, they create an enormous amount of insecurity. So we're living in a world where right now, there is a tremendous amount of insecurity infusing the whole general field. And it's something that can be clearly felt. Also, the cross of planning is coming down. You, know, you, can, you can feel deeper and deeper how difficult it is to hold on to some kind of a projection of planning, you know, or even on the most simple level. No? What am I going to do next week or in three months or this or that? Or where am I going to invest my money? Or all these kind of things, they're breaking down. No? The whole political system, if we look at what's going on in the U.S. right now, or, I mean, just putting our focus on the U.S. is enough, is like, wow, you know, the, 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 it's like basically two elderly people fighting for one of the most important power structures in the world. It's like, wow, what's going on there? No? So it brings up an enormous amount of insecurity. And this week, first 38, 39, and we'll look deeper into it when we look at Sylvester Stallone uh, stance in life. And then comes the, 40, the 53 and the 54. So there is fuel, you know, fuel for transformation, fuel for starting. And at the same time, there is no sacral conditioning. So that 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 puts everybody, especially those who are generators, into really learning to you know rely on their intrinsic sacral availability sacral response and not run on the conditioning in the root center which from a positive perspective gives us an opportunity and that's at least how i'm seeing my own process go as a reflector it gives us a tremendous opportunity to look at what root conditioning is and then these energies they can they can be used in a in um in a way where you know we're using the weather at our advantage and using the weather at my advantage is seeing okay how does this contribute to a more grounded stance to a more anchored stance in life and and me personally i'm also looking at how does that influence my sexuality you know how is it influencing having a certain kind of nervousness or or impetuousness around sexuality or a more grounded stance and a deeper stance and an embracing stance towards the frequencies that have to do with sexuality because obviously you know these format energies they they connect the root center to the sacral center and we have either an embraceive and a, a responsive stance in sexual frequency through the sacral center, or is or there is this nervousness, you know, this stress around sexuality. So that's part of my personal investigation there. And and obviously, you know, 
Pluto in the 60th gate of limitations. You know, the, I find that perspective on, on limitations, especially in the sixth line, so interesting. You know, it's like there are limitations. We need to look at them. We need to see how we can transcend them. We have to give our totality in them. And then at the same time, we cannot get over obsessed with them, which is the other side, the detriment of the 60th gate and the sixth line, which, you know, too much rigidity would bring us to a sensation of like, I can't get out of here. This is too much. And then, you know, there's all these doors of uh, the doors that have to do with chronic depression that's that that open up. You know? So this week, extra, extra carefulness, I would say to the root center, you know, pay attention, take advantage of the energies that are there in the root center. Don't let yourself be driven by this frequency that says, I want to be free of this. I want to be free. I want to get rid of this. You know, it's, it's like, no, 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 this is not the way we, this is not the way we anchor ourselves in life. You know? So that's, that's um, at least one of my main perspectives on the, on, on how I see myself interact with the neutrino weather these days. And then, obviously, it's always an interesting process for anybody that has been engaged with looking at the neutrino weather to look at the nodes. The nodal configuration is so long, usually. You know, it's at least three months. You know? And that nodal configuration goes from the sixth line deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper into the first line and then it moves to the next gate. So here we're seeing the energies move deeper into the 21st gate and the 48th gate. So, you know, relying on our personal individual frequencies, resources, awareness, needs, you know, that providing for our own resources is interesting to see it combined with that anchoredness and this, this focus on learning to anchor ourselves, anchor ourselves, anchor ourselves. Also interesting to notice that the frequencies of the 21st and the 48, they're going deeper, deeper, deeper into the individual, the personal. You know, they're less into transpersonal lines and more into, hey, I got to learn to stand up for myself and my own awareness. You know? and, and, and that coming together with you know, Jupiter meeting the, the, the south node and, and bringing forward that, you know, putting our own frequency into wavelength with, you know, life itself, love itself. Hmm? So, yeah, there is where I, I, I interestingly enough, <laughs> I heard an astrologer talk about the fact that um, Neptune is going retrograde. So, you know, at least from our perspective, Netro, uh, Neptune is such a, a slow moving planet that I don't know if it's going retrograde. It's very well possible that the degrees are going back. I mean, it's it's, it's most it's, it's very likely because, you know, I trust the astrologer. So for sure, you know, the, the degrees here are moving backwards, but it's still staying in the same line. Now. The other day I woke up and I hardly remembered where i was or who i was and then it was it was exactly on the moment that they were talking about neptune going retrograde and neptune is on top of my sun for the moment so you know it gives us through neptune neptune has been put forward by martin grassinger in his course on the planets and their qualities as basically the power for direction it's not the direction but it's the power for direction and here neptune as the power for direction is basically you know bringing us very deep inwards you know, it's basically saying your unique unique life spark the innocence of who you are which is reflected in our body graph that's our innocence you know? that for the moment needs to be your like at least Neptune is saying, like, make your innocence the power for your direction in life. And um, 
Yeah, it's 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 an interesting to an interesting perspective uh, to contemplate. You know, the to look at our existentiality as the power for our direction. And if we're looking at existentiality for the power of our direction, then our groundedness, our vulnerability, our being here now in our mortality, you know, root center, is definitely an interesting learning school under this neutrino weather and a way of partaking in it that is nurturing. So that being said, I wish you all a great week and see you next week. Bye.